as I mentioned earlier, I handle employee benefits, cyber liability, and tech we know. Um, I work with a lot of startups and bootstrap businesses, both in uh, Denver and in Summit County, work with the co-working facilities. So I'm feeling the pain of the employer groups. I know you're all asking yourself, why are these rates going up so high up here versus Denver? You know, I don't have all the answers and I'm not an expert on the rates and stuff. Um, I can tell you that as I'm presenting rates and options to groups up here and in the Denver area, um, more so up here, I'm finding a lot of young people, even if you're making the rates affordable, they're still not wanting to buy insurance. They think everything should be free. Um, I, I do have ways of helping some of the groups um, if they've got five or more healthy employees um, to get uh, Denver rates. So I've got some options, but I'm still stuck. What can I do for individuals? What can I do for the very micro groups with the two to four employees? Um, and uh, it, it is a struggle, so I just want to let you know that. But um, uh, when we're doing the benefits seminars, and I've done three and I've got another one next week, we have been presenting the Amendment 69. I am not an expert. I don't work with Coloradans for Coloradans. Um, and I apologize because I don't have my slideshow that I normally have, and I'm going to try to work off of this sheet here. If you didn't get one, um, there's some, there, one in the back here. Um, just a couple of points, first of all. Uh, the Democrats, Republicans, and most of the Chamber of Commerces around the state are against this. Um, in fact, the Denver Chamber, um, they polled their members, and 98% of them are against the Colorado Care. They feel that it will put a lot of small businesses out of business. Governor Hickenlooper has had calls from big businesses that were looking at moving into the state of Colorado, and they, um, they're not building or moving their employees here until this election is decided, because they don't want to throw their people into Medicaid and a taxation that is only gonna go up. Um, the uh, expensive cost of the uh, 25 billion that we're starting with, it's really 36 billion. Um, we don't know whether or not we're gonna get the extra money from the government. Um, I do want to talk about Vermont for a second because there is some um, comparison. The state of Vermont tried to put this in place in 2013. They passed a law, but it was an amendment. They decided that uh, they would use 11.5% of their, uh, as a taxation amount. And the 11.5%, after they did the analysis, they decided they would have to raise the rates of the taxation 160% just to be able to sustain the system going forward. And they said that in analysis, uh, a good number of the businesses would leave the state and a lot of the doctors would leave the state. Um, so that was Vermont. Um, I've been in the insurance business over 20 years and worked for two insurance companies before I became a broker. And we're talking all the way to the Fortune 200 level, the stuff I've dealt with. And so I know medical trend. If we just take 11.5% from 2013 and add 1%, each year. I don't know where the 10% number comes from. I'm just looking at this as, an, as somebody who looks at insurance rates. I do not understand where you guys came up with 10%. In fact, I had the discussion with the uh, Colorado Health Institute when the, um, uh, the article came out in the Denver Post. They asked them, where did you get these numbers? I said, did you get Millman or some other actuarial company to come in and do an analysis of the five million people plus in the state of Colorado um, based on our population. Because Millman does things with EHA, the postal workers, and, and all these other big national pools that, that we all support with our taxpayer money and people pay into as government employees. And she said, no. So I was like, where did you get these numbers? I said, based on five million population, if you take the claims data on the five million population across individual, small group, and large group, um, the 25 million, Maybe the 36 million is probably not even going to be enough. And the other question I had for her was, did you take into account the 20 to 40 percent of businesses that may move out of the area? We're talking large businesses and small businesses that are just going to pick up and say, can't do it anymore. We're moving out of state. Um, we can't pay 10 percent. My employees can't pay it. We're going to go to Dallas. We're going to move to Seattle. We're going to move to Boston. Your startups will go where it's going to cost them the cheapest and cost their employees the less money out of their pocket to be able to run their business. Some of these people will be stuck in leases for the next few years and, to, and 
But the thing is, if they're working virtually, um, they're gonna pick up and move. And they're gonna be the first ones. I'll take questions in a second. Um, but that's, that's something that, that we have to think about. What happens to the business community, not just here in Summit County, but what happens in the front range with these big businesses, it's a domino effect across the entire state because we're all kind of inter interconnected. 